is Nicholas Montez, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Nicholas Montez. Welcome back to another YouTube channel, for everybody. I'm so excited to have you all back here together again. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing the finale of Moon Knight, episode 6. Basically, that's the title. Uh, or Monsters in... Uh, I don't know. But, uh, today, before we get started reviewing episode 6 of Moon Knight, there are some things we need to go over. Uh... We just need to go over my thoughts on what were my thoughts on this. Like, what were my thoughts going into this show, and what were my thoughts going into this finale? So, my thoughts going into this show, and really before going into this finale, is that with the, with this show as a whole, I was thinking that it was kind of going to be like a very different show that was going to be full of action. That we were going to explore all this Egyptian kind of stuff. With the stuff that they did with Mark Spector and Stephen Grant. Like having separate personalities. That was something I was never expecting. Because if you've seen the Marvel cartoons where Moon Knight appears. Moon Knight is nothing like that. It's just Mark Spector. But at the same time I feel like it was amusing. So it was cool. Uh, and then my thoughts going into this finale, I didn't really know how they could do it, because throughout all the action, especially when it's an action show, the action, there hasn't really been a standout action sequence until this very episode, uh, which we'll talk about in just a minute. And also, like, as much as I really like the, the fifth episode, which, I mean, it's, it's fine, but it's not the greatest episode of the series... It, uh, set it up weirdly because Stephen Grant was killed off, and Mark Spector, we don't even know how he's, he was gonna come back, and then, like, we barely got to see Layla and Harrow in real time, so we didn't really know how this could all set it up. But, that leads into my review for the finale, so now let's move on to the my review for the finale. So for me, I would say that this is my favorite episode of this series, and I respectfully mean that. Uh, <coughs> sorry. But I just honestly thought it was a great conclusion to the whole series as a whole. Maybe that's just because I was kind of tired of, the, of this series, like, I don't feel like any of the episodes, like, the story wasn't coming together. Maybe it's just because... This kind of Marvel, having all this weird stuff going on and not really knowing what switch was kind of confusing to me. And, like, I want to be, like, there was always something throughout this show, like, okay, so you're in, it takes place in the mindset, so now the Avengers going to be this. But then it some, says, says something else. It's kind of like how Layla thought that, like, whenever she learns something new, you think there's no more secrets. It's kind of like that. But then you get into this episode, and I think it, I think the personal thing what made me like it a lot was really the action. As, you know, Mark Spector, Layla get brought back, and they just go for it, beating all these guys up, beating up Hero, and all the great skill sets, and it's all fantastic. The way that the action is shot is just absolutely amazing. And I'm so, I don't understand why we never got action like this. In like the other episodes. It doesn't make any sense. But I thought the action was one of the best things about this episode. Likewise, I loved what they did with Layla and making her basically a superhero in a way. Uh, I never, I wasn't expecting her to get like superpowers or like the powers of a bird. I heard in the... <coughs> Sorry. I'm a little under the weather. I don't know why I can't have enemy. <coughs> But I heard um, somewhere on the internet that uh, her superhero name is the Scarlet, is the Scarlet Scarab, because you know the, the Scarab had like a wing thing, so it kind of resembles that. I also think it looks like the Wonder, the suit that Wonder Woman wore in nineteen eighty, in Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. So it's kind of cool to see that, and but also it resembles like Hawkman and Hawk Woman and stuff like that, Hot Girl. So it it, it kind of looks like that a little bit. Uh, 
some other things to be talked about. I also liked the reveal of Jake Lockley, though there are some problems with that, which we'll talk about in the bad. But the fact that we finally get to see Jake Lockley, uh, the fact that we actually get to see what he looks like, is awesome. Uh, and so yeah, I was really intrigued by it, but I was really intrigued by it because of the action. The action was my, my favorite thing about this episode. So, yeah. So that's what I personally loved about this whole episode. Now let's move on to the bad. And for the bad on this one, I guess you could say the way they did Jake Lockley, I thought, was kind of weird. Because, now granted, I don't know... Because they've been teasing this character throughout the entire series. And the fact that we're going to have to wait until we see Moon Knight again to actually get to be revealed. Just kind of sucks. Feels kind of cheap and lazy. And so I, I did not like the way they did that at all. Uh, also, I guess we could say the other problem I had with it is that... And this is really what other people have been saying. But a lot of people have been saying that like it feels similar to all these other MCU finales where it has big action spectacle and it's rushed. I guess you can say that, but it didn't really bother me. But there were some confusing parts at the end when like he's still chained to the bed and then the credits roll. But like there's two fishes in the fish tank. Like it's kinda it's kinda weird in the way it ends, but in the overall defeating of the villain and also like they try to get rid of, of, uh, what's his name, Kanshu, but, but he's still there, and he's still with Jake Lockley, so, to me, that's a little, a little strange, but, like, if they're gonna get, if they were trying to get rid of Kanshu, then how is Moon Knight gonna be in the rest of the MCU? I feel like he should have sticked around, so that way they can at least compromise to create something great, but, uh, yeah, that was really all my issues with the episode, and, uh, yeah, so I actually thoroughly enjoyed this episode. It was a little weak at times, but overall, I really liked it, and I just thought it was a really cool episode. So that's my thoughts on Moon Knight Episode 6 before I give my final score. Be sure to comment down below what are your thoughts on Episode 6 of Moon Knight. Did you guys love it? Did you guys hate it? Rub between? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section below. With that said, let's get all my scores. Alright, so we have one more thing to do before we end this video. Well, actually, a couple things. And it's really to talk about my thoughts on the show as a whole, my thoughts on Phase 4, some theories I might have, and for the next upcoming MCU Disney Plus TV show. And if I'm being honest, I wouldn't really say I have any theories. One thing I, I did say in one of my other reviews is that I remember looking for the ca looking at the cast for Moon Knight. I I saw that uh, the girl that played Sharon Carter from like the Captain America trilogy, she was gonna be in the show, but she doesn't even appear. The only thing that they mentioned from Sharon Carter that's at least related to her character is Madripoor. So maybe they were gonna lead to with that, but because of like the death of the actors, they had to, and because of COVID, they had to like re-edit some stuff or you know reshoots or something. I don't know, but I don't really have any theories. I hope that we get to see him again, not in a multiverse project, because that's just cheap and lazy of doing something big and putting a, a character like this in the universe. It's just kind of cheap, but. I'm excited to see Moon Knight if he comes back again, so we'll see what if it happens. And I honestly want a season two. They haven't announced it, but I want a season two. That's all I want to say. But overall, yeah, that's my theories. All right, so now that we finally have the sixth episode of Moon Knight out, all six episodes are available on Disney Plus at this very moment. What are my thoughts on this show as a whole? You know, I was excited for it at the at the start. Uh, it was my most anticipated series of Disney of the MCU content we were getting this year. Uh, you know, Oscar Isaac has nailed it. This whole series, 
both uh, Stephen Grant, uh, Mark Spector. Can't really say that much for uh, Jake Lockley because he only appeared in like maybe two scenes, maybe one, because we don't even know if that other scene in the in the mental hospital was actually Jake Lockley, so we don't actually know for sure. Uh, <clears throat> there are some pretty cool action. It does introduce a kind of different world, a very different kind of tone and story. It introduces some nice characters, uh, but the story, the way that the story is told, the way that it kind of does some things, is kind of weird, and it bothers me a little bit. But overall, I did like this show. It's better than some stuff, but it's not great. So overall, I'm going to give this show a B-, minus, and on the entertainment score, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Is it a show that I would be re go back and re-watch all six episodes? Probably not. There are some episodes I would watch more than others, but overall, I did like this show. So that's my review for this show. So now let's go on to other stuff. So for me, my thoughts on Phase 4 as of right now with the addition of Episode 6 and Moon Knight finally ending... I guess you could say, I don't, I can't really say that it's affected it, but with the addition of Moon Knight in Phase 4, I think it was really cool. But the thing is, is that when you come to a series or a movie in the, in the new MCU, like, because, like, Phase 4, that, that, that's the thing I love about certain movies, like superhero films, is that they're meant to introduce you to a new world, but also a new character, and make you feel like he's an original character. He's not a copycat of anyone. He's an original character. And this show kind of does that. But when you get to the but when you get to the part of the finale, it does feel like he's just doing the Moon Knight and Mr. Knight stuff to defeat Harrow and Amit. And it feels a little weak to me. You know, Shang Chi I thought did work worked well with that. Black Widow and Eternals, not so much. No Way Home, can't really say much about that because that was like a culmination of Spider-Man films. Uh, Hawkeye, I guess you could say that. Uh, well, not necessarily, it was more like a Black Widow type of story. Loki, can't say that at all. WandaVision, I guess you could say that about Falcon and Soldier, making them new Captain America uh, and w White Wolf. What if, basically just anthology series about Marvel characters. Doctor Strange, can't say that yet because I haven't seen it, so I'm seeing it uh, in a couple of minutes, in a couple of hours. Well, actually, in an hour, by the way. By the time you're watching this video, I'll be seeing it at 5.30 in the afternoon. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it's affected my thoughts on Phase 4 as a whole, but I still do like Phase 4. I guess you could say there hasn't really been a big dud in Phase 4 besides maybe like Eternals, but that's really everything I have to say. Eternals is a good phase, but but it is my least favorite of the phases. All right, so now that we finally have Moon Knight out of the way, we're getting Doctor Strange in a couple of hours, or in a couple of minutes. We got to talk about the next Disney Plus MCU Disney TV show. Am I excited for, for which is Miss Marvel, and am I excited for it? Yeah. You know, they've done really well of telling a superhero story that is in the perspective of a high schooler. They've done it amazingly with Spider-Man. They've done it pretty cool in middle school with Miles Morales. Uh, and, and here's the thing. I've actually seen, much like Moon Knight, I've seen Miss Marvel, but this is more of Miss Marvel's thing. I've seen Miss Marvel more in the series, in uh, Disney XD and Disney Channel series on Avengers Assemble, on Avengers Secret Wars, Avengers Ultron Revolution, Ult Avengers uh, Revolution, Black Panther's Re Black Panther's Quest. I've seen her in all of that, and I think she fits it. She basically feels like what Spider-Man would be doing in the MCU if he was part of the like the official Avengers team going on missions with them. I think that was awesome. And the trailers that they've put out for Miss Marvel. 
I don't think they have excited me, but it has me curious to see what this series is going to be. Also, the fact that they're like changing her powers to not Mr. Fan, to not make it feel like Mr. Fantastic, but make it like Green Lantern, seems kind of like a weird thing because it just she's just going to have energy fists punching out, but like she's walking on water like like uh, Sisu and Raya the Last Dragon. Like, I'm interested to see what this show is going to be about, but um, like. It seemed like the direct audience is a little weird at times, so who knows? Maybe it'll probably be uh, on the next great Spider-Man movie. Who knows? Maybe it'll be the next great high school superhero film, but who knows? I am excited for Miss Marvel. Uh, so that's everything I have to say. This is a long video of probably a 15-minute, 16-minute long video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All my social media stuff is in the about section over there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.